Canva recently announced some really exciting new updates to their platform. And one of those new features that they have is Canva Co. This new feature really opens up some really cool creative possibilities. And I really can't wait to see what people do with it because it really opens things up in that you can code things without actually needing to know code. Basically, it's an AI driven code creator. So you tell it what you want to create and it's gonna generate the code for you. Now you can't actually access the code. Basically, it just makes something that then you can place onto a page in Canva and turn into a website. So you can create some sort of website, some sort of app, and you can put it on the web for people to use. And it's such an awesome tool because it allows people that don't know how to code to create really fun things that they've dreamed up, really want to create. And now they can create these things they dream up because they're not limited by that ability to be able to actually code. So I've started playing around with it myself and I wanted to share with you my recent project, what I've been working on and a few other ideas as well. So you can start to see what is possible with the Canva code. So what I decided to create and have a go at in Canva code was making my own color palette generator because there are other color palette generators out there, but I always felt that they were a little bit limited. They're a bit more basic. They just give you one color palette and it's not really geared towards brand designers. It's very generalized. So I wanted to create something that was very much geared towards brand designers and people that were creating their own brand, trying to get their color palette just right and having all those extra things that they need to create a good color palette that is going to work well for a brand. So basically what I've done first of all is I've gone in and just put an initial prompt. So you can basically, you tell it you want to do the code, you put in your prompt and it's gonna code up something. So what I find is easiest is just to first give it your idea, your basic idea, don't get too overly detailed, just basically tell it what it is you want to create. Then you can see what it's gonna create from that and you can start to tweak and improve it based on what it's created. So you can keep going in and basically say, now can you add this or can you just change this about it and so that's what I continued to do I started to ask it can you make these tweaks can you make these changes can you add this thing can you change this style and it started to update it each time and you can actually go back and click on um, past revisions so if you decided actually I liked what it had before maybe it's not quite what I want anymore you can actually go back to previous ones as well and one thing I noticed as I saw it actually making code because I've actually done some HTML and CSS in the past I have a little bit of code knowledge I noticed that when it came to fonts it was pulling Google fonts so that made me realize I could actually tell it hey I want to use a particular Google font instead of the one that it's just deciding itself so what I then did was actually went into Google fonts picked out a font I wanted and told it hey can you use this font instead so that's a little tip there if you want to use a particular fonts if you want a particular style go and tell it because it's using Google fonts. They're free fonts to use. So tell it to use one of those fonts. You can also tell it things like colors and style and things like that. So I told it that I wanted a, a scrapbook, sketchbook type feel because I want it to feel like someone's in their sketchbook working on their color palette. And it created this feel as well. And it's going to put sticky tape and things like that. So. So as you start to get the functionality going, then also get creative and start telling it how you want it to look. Now, once I was happy with it and got it to actually do what I wanted, then all I had to do was place it on a page and now I can publish it as a website. So what I did was I published it as a website and then I realized, hey, I wanna actually add an about section. So I actually added an additional page to my website and designed that within Canva, made an about page. I also recorded a YouTube video I also recorded a video on how to use it and embedded that into that website as well. So basically you can actually use this within pages. You can use it as one page on your website and then have other pages as well, that sort of thing. So you can definitely use it as a starting point to build a website. You can use it standalone or you could use it within a website somewhere. I actually ended up buying a domain for this because I got quite excited about what I created and wanted something that I could actually share and people could use. So I'm now gonna share with you how you can actually get the most out of this color palette creator that I made. Let's take a look at how you actually get the most out of the brand color palette creator. So first of all, up the top here we have have color psychology so this isn't going to give you this amazing palette that's all the things to do with the color psychology of your brand it's more just a starting point so if you're feeling a bit stuck about what kind of colors might I want to use to create the feeling I want this is going to give you just a starting point so say you want a brand that feels very calm so you can put in calm and it's instantly going to give you these calm tones so this again is just a starting point you might love one of these colors and you can lock them in 
Or you might go, I like that, but maybe just slightly different. So you can come in here and make some small adjustments. So you can adjust it slightly. Once you're happy with a the color, then you want to lock it. So click the little lock and it will stay the same. So now we've got our first color to get us started and now we can make more. So you want to over here decide how many colors you want in your brand. So you might want to keep five or you want to might want to change it. So you just want four colors in your brand. Now what you're going to do is it's going to just start generating colors that are going to go well with the color you've locked. You can click generate new as many times as you like. And every time you find colors you love, you can lock them in. Now, again, as I said in here, you can also tweak colors and get them right. Or if you already have an existing color that you want, if you go down here to hex code, you can actually put a hex code in. So if there's a color, you've already picked one brand color, but you're not sure what else to go with it. You can actually put the colors you've already got in and then use the generate new to find other colors that can go with it. We've also got here a dropper. So if you put a picture next to your browser and pick out colors from an image. So you can just put that next to your browser and use the dropper and grab whatever colors you want and then put them in that way. So that's also a really handy tool as well. So now we've got our colors here. It's going to also give us our secondary palette. So this is going to give us lighter tones and darker tones of the colors we've chosen. So you don't need to use all of these if you don't want to, but they're giving you instantly creating those darker and lighter tones that are going to pair with these main palette. So you can create things like shadows, you know, like drop shadows on a button, um, different things like that, where you need those secondary colors that match that main color palette it's instantly generating these for you. So you can pick out the ones that are going to be helpful and useful for you and what you're trying to do. So then we have text color. So this instantly gives you black, two different grays and white. So you can choose the main text color that you want to use. So you, all you have to do is select a color and say, that's the color I want to use as text. Or you can actually go in here and add a color. So if you want to use something completely different, you can go and click here and you can pick out the color you want. Or if you've got a hex code, you can do that. So you can put in your own and then press. So when you create it, say we wanted this kind of color, press add, and then we've added it in. And when then we've got that blue box around it to select it. So, so now that we've chosen our colors, we've got our main palette, secondary palette, and we've chosen a text color. Now we've got the accessibility testing, which is where we can see what colors work with what. So when we put certain text colors on top of certain other colors we've got as backgrounds, which ones are readable? And this can be very helpful too, to assess are my colors actually working? So you can see, okay, these colors work well. There's plenty of green ones here. So there's plenty that work well for different use cases. So things like buttons, backgrounds, all those sort of things. So you're going to think about how you're using these. So you might want a bright color for buttons. So you want to make sure that one of the colors that is quite bold that stands out like this blue or the green, that there's something here that's green we can use for buttons. So we can see here, yes, that one works well. So that could work for a button because we've got the green light on that. So if you don't have anything that's green or there's very limited, like only the white ones are green, then that's where you've got to think, well, maybe my colors aren't working. Maybe I need to make some adjustments. Or if you see the text color you've chosen, there's no greens. Well, maybe you need to change your text color so that there's contrast against the colors in your actual palette. So this is really helpful to really assess your palette and make sure it's actually usable. Make sure it's actually going to work when you actually go to use it. So you've got to think about what colors would I probably be using for backgrounds on images? What would I probably be using for a button? So that you can think about, well, are these actually readable? Is there enough contrast? Is this color palette actually going to work? And then what would these use cases be? So you could see here that this cream and this blue would make great background colors. You can see that this dark green here, it's going to work well for a button. Then anything on white, perfectly fine. This blue color here though is a little bit more iffy. So it may depend what you're going to use it for. You probably aren't going to use it where you put text on top of it. Maybe you're just using it for graphic elements and things like that and you don't put text on top. So you, this is where you really need to think about how am I going to use my colors is this palette actually going to work for me and the way I want to use my colors? So then we have the preview your palette where it actually goes through and shows you how your palette might look used in different ways. So, so this is just great to start to visualize your palette and think, is this, is this the overall look and feel that I want? So it's got these little social media posts. It's got buttons. So again, going back to this where I talked about buttons, you can see here that the, the blue and the green work quite well. The blue didn't get as high a rating. So we know that maybe the green will be better, but it still, it gives us a little real life example. You can see how that looks. It also has some pattern examples. So you can see how, if you were to create some sort of patterns or graphic elements, how these colors might work well together. 
then whichever color you selected up here for your font for your text is actually going to put text in that color so you can see how that actually looks using that text color and then finally once you've settled on everything you know you've gone through all this and like yes i love my color palette this is working out for me you now have all your color codes here that you can utilize so it's really easy to grab your colors now for a few other fun ideas of things you can do in Canva code. So I also created this ideas generator where I put in, okay, there's these different types of posts. So reels, carousels, static graphic. And then I just went and put in a heap of different prompts and basically made it make a machine where it's going to randomly give you a different one. So you're going to say, make a reel and use this prompt. So if you were somebody that um, shares different information, like maybe you share different content prompts or something else, and you could actually create some sort of app that people can use rather than a spreadsheet. So if you already got something that you're selling that's in a spreadsheet form or a list form, think about maybe actually making an interactive app within Canva code. This could be really fun for your audience and makes it much more fun and interactive and would be a really awesome opt-in. I can really see this being a really great tool for creating opt-ins. Now I also showed this to my kids and they created some really funny games. So let's have a look at some. is a really cool and amazing tool and I can't wait to see what you try with it and I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit behind the scenes of what I've done with it so it's got you inspired to try and use it yourself and also see the process too of how you can tweak it improve things and keep at it to create something that's really exciting and what you want to make and if you want to check out my project my color palette generator you can find the link below in the description so have a go with Canva code and happy creating <laughs>